Hey guys, I want to welcome you back to another episode on J of All Trades. Today, I'm standing in front of my Peerless boiler, and this model is the WBV-03, and this is an oil-fired boiler. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to replace the nozzle on this Rialo 40 burner, and this is one of the components that could potentially cause your boiler to fail. And the last thing you need is a boiler to fail during the winter. So here on this housing, you're going to find a tag with all the information for your burner here. And just in case you need to replace it, you can always look at this tag and order another one. And on this side, you have all the information for the boiler, including the nozzle size. And as you can see, that's extremely tiny and kind of hard to read there. So what I did was I reprinted it out nice and big and then taped it right in the front so you can actually see it much easier. So I've never actually had this nozzle fail on me and the reason why is because I replace it every year. This is why we call it preventative maintenance so we don't wait till it shuts down. So let's get this thing changed. First thing you want to do is you want to turn off your power to your boiler. Always remember that safety is first. The next thing I'll do here is I'll shut the oil supply as well as the return. And here I have a ball valve and I also have an OSV valve here. Now that we've gotten all the electrical and the oil isolated, we're ready to take this burner apart. We'll start by removing the housing around the burner. There are three screws that need to be loosened, one on each side and one at the top. Keep in mind that you don't fully need to remove all these screws. You just need to loosen them up enough to pull the housing apart. As you can see, I still have the screw attached there. Once you have all three screws loosened, you'll be able to just pull the cover right off. We'll set this cover to the side and we'll start working on this burner. Here, once we take this off, we can see there's a TT controller here that provides a signal to start the burner. So we want to do a visual before we get started just to make sure that everything looks fine and there's nothing that looks damaged here. It's always good practice to do this just in case something is damaged and this way we can get ahead of it so we can solve that problem before moving on. Here is the side with the fan and visually everything looks good and nothing looks like it's damaged. Before we continue, let's take a look at the new nozzle that I ordered. And this particular nozzle I got off of Amazon and I'll include a link in the description for you guys. Here is a closer look at the nozzle itself. In the front you have that tiny orifice and in the back you have this filter piece. And the heating oil has to actually pass through this filter before it gets sprayed out of the nozzle. So that first number, the 0.85, is the flow rate, which is gallons per hour. And the second number, which is 60 degrees W, represents the spray pattern. So let's start by getting this controller off. Here I'm using a Phillips screwdriver to loosen the screw. Once the screw is loosened, just give it a tug and that slides right out. You can see in the back there's two spots where the controller slides into the electrodes. And in the bottom you can see where the controller connects to the terminals. We're going to set this aside so we don't accidentally damage this controller. The next thing I'll do here is I'll remove this cover. There's a screw here and there's also a screw hiding in the bottom there. There's also a little warning sign here letting you know that there's a lot of electricity that passes through those electrodes. Those electrodes that are sitting inside there create a nice spark which ignites the fuel. For some reason, this screw in the bottom here is really tight. I'm definitely going to make sure that when I reinstall this, it's not going to be so tight. There's no reason to put the screw that tight. If you're struggling to get a screw out, just readjust yourself and take your time. You really don't want to force anything here. You just want to make sure that you don't damage anything. So in this case, I was in a weird position because I didn't want to block the camera. And so eventually I got the screw to loosen. Once I got the screws loosened, I just used my hand to take them out the rest of the way.
We're going to set this aside and leave the screws on there. Here is the entire piece with the two electrodes and you can see them actually sticking out there. In order to remove this entire piece, we're going to need to remove this top screw right here. And this is a Phillips head screwdriver. Once you loosen that screw, you're going to need an adjustable here and you're going to remove this as well. This tiny line here allows oil to be pumped through and it sprays right through the nozzle. You might see some residual oil that was sitting in that line come out. You can grab a paint tray and just put it right under there just to catch any residual oil. I find it to be nice and low enough to just slide right under there. Now when you're taking this piece out, just be gentle and be careful not to damage the electrodes. Just take your time and just walk it right out. And here's the entire assembly. So here you're going to see that we have two electrodes that are meeting up at the nozzle in the front there. And here again, you just want to do a quick visual inspection and make sure that there's no damage or nothing looks suspicious and everything looks all intact and really good and solid. When we turn this to the front, you'll see this thing here. It's called an air turbulator and it is dirty as you can see. So that'll need to be cleaned out. From that tiny line, the oil actually reaches through to the front here and it gets to the nozzle where the filter is inside and then it squirts right out the front. So this piece is your nozzle all the way in the front and that's what we need to remove. So we're gonna turn this over and we're gonna remove this entire piece out of this housing. Here on the side, we're gonna be loosening up this Phillips screw. We're not gonna be removing it all the way. We'll just remove it enough to slide this whole entire piece out. Now here, once you pull this out, we're going to rest this down and you're going to see on the side here that there's an indentation where the screw actually sits. So there's only one way you can actually put this in. Now to remove the nozzle, we're going to be using two adjustables here and one adjustable is going to be grabbing onto the bottom here and the other one is going to be grabbing onto the nozzle in the front and you're going to twist until it breaks free. As I was twisting this and it broke free, it actually fell out of my hands and into the pan, but it didn't have a far way to fall. Once it breaks free, you could just use your hands and take the nozzle right out. And once you take this out, just take a look at the filter part. And you can see here that the filter here is looking very clean. There's not much debris that's stuck in it. So this nozzle is still good and I'm going to be saving this. And I'll put it aside and keep it as a backup just in case this other one fails. Just take a look inside here and make sure that everything is clear. And I like to give it a couple taps to see if anything falls out. And it's all clear as far as I see. So that's very good. Now we can install the new nozzle right on here. Be sure to take your two adjustable wrenches and just snug this up. Make sure it's tight. Uh, you don't want to overkill it, but you want to make sure that it's tight enough to create a nice seal. I'm just going to take the opportunity and put the old nozzle in this container. And I'll just save it for any emergency. So if this current nozzle in there happens to fail, I can always swap out this one and put it back in, in an emergency situation. So here, I'm going to be taking a wire brush and I'm going to be cleaning out this air turbulator here. You can see that there's debris here that's kind of blocking up these slots or these little openings. 
because if this is not cleaned, it can cause the boiler to not get enough air, which can potentially cause the flame to go out. Cleaning this will also make sure that the boiler will run efficiently because if there's no obstruction with the air, the proper fuel and air will mix together to create that combustion. So this is one of the key ways to prevent your boiler from failing. And I find that when boilers fail, they always fail on the coldest day of the year. I don't know why it happens that way, but it always does. So I want to talk a little bit more about the nozzle while I'm cleaning this. You want to make sure that you get the right size for your boiler because every boiler has a specific rating and you need to stick to that rating when it comes to nozzles. So just make sure that you buy the right size of nozzle. It'll make sure you get really clean combustion and the right amount of efficiency. Now that I've gotten the air turbulator clean, I'm gonna grab some paper towel here and I'll give this a good wipe down. And as you can see, these two points meet and these two are called ignition electrodes. That's where the spark takes place, right at the tips of those two electrodes. So I'm just gonna wipe them down with this paper towel because they have a little bit of soot on them. Just keep in mind that those two electrodes don't actually touch each other and there is a required spacing that it needs to be from the nozzle as well as from each other. But that's a whole entirely different video to show you how to set that up. You'll notice that I didn't change the position of those electrodes because they're already set and I'm gonna leave them right where they are. Now just make sure that those tips are nice and clean and they're free of soot. It also wouldn't hurt to wipe down the rest of the assembly since we have everything right in front of us here. Now that I've gotten everything nice and clean, I'll put this nozzle piece and the line back into this housing and we'll basically put this right back where that indentation is. There's no way to really mess this up because you can only put it one way. Now I'm gonna slowly slide this back into position here. And you wanna take your time when you're doing this and be mindful not to damage anything on your way in. I strongly suggest you take the opportunity to connect this line or at least get the nut started for it. It's gonna be a little more difficult to bend the line into place if this is secured at the top. So I started by hand first and once I get that line started there, I'm gonna secure the screw that's at the top here. Now I can tighten this nut that's on this line. Now it's time to put the cover back on around the ends of the electrodes. And you wanna go in nice and slow again Try not to force anything here because you've got a delicate line there for the fuel as well as the electrode ends sitting there. And I found this to be harder to put in than to take out. And at one point I had to actually bend the housing at the top here just to slip that in. But once it's in there, you can start these screws by hand first because starting these screws by hand will help you to avoid cross threading them. And then once you get them fully in there, you can start to just tighten them up with the screwdriver. Since I've gotten all of this already opened up here, I'm gonna be taking the opportunity to show you guys how to check the flow of your oil. And to check the flow of your oil, you have this little orifice here in the front where the pump is. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a pan right under there. And 
we're going to take a rubber hose and I'll just cut a piece of rubber hose to connect to that piece. And this hose is just going to help me to direct the oil into the pan. But you can always do this without the hose. I just happen to have this hose lying around. Now that the hose is set up here, I'm going to look at this uh, terminal here and between terminal 5 and 6, we're going to jump that out and we got a line coming in here and that's terminal 5 and then into terminal 6. So we're going to jump these two terminals and then we're going to turn on our system and then we're going to turn our thermostat up to turn this burner on and then we'll be able to get the oil flow. By doing this, we're visually going to see the oil flow and this will help us to determine if the oil is flowing freely or if there's any obstruction in the line. Now if there's any obstruction, then you won't see the oil flowing properly. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open up our supply line and our return line. Then we're going to turn our power back on and then we'll turn our thermostat up to some ridiculous number and then we'll use our adjustable wrench to just loosen this here to allow this to pump oil through and this will show us exactly what the flow will look like. So here I'm going to slowly start turning this and we're going to start to see oil flow through here. And we're going to hear this kick on and here we're getting a nice flow of oil as you can see and there's no obstructions in that line. Now that I see that I have great oil flow here, I'm just going to remove this and I'll tighten this back up and we'll be all set to move on. Now make sure you turn the power back off and then we're going to remove this jumper. Don't forget to tighten those screws back on on those terminals just to avoid any wires coming loose. I'm just going to get this pan out of the way so I can have enough space to do everything else. Next we'll take the TT controller here and we'll slip it back in place onto those electrode stems and we're just going to slide it straight up and in and tighten up the screw on the side. And finally, we're going to take the cover and we're going to install it right back on here. Now that we've finally changed our nozzle on here, we can flip the power back on and I am just happy to know that the nozzle is good to go, our oil flow is great, and we have one less thing to worry about for this winter. And as you've heard there, that boiler just fired up right away and that burner ignited, and that's exactly what we'd like to hear. I'll also include a link to one of my previous videos showing you guys exactly how to change your oil filters. And as you can see, I have two inline oil filters here. So if you guys have found this video to be valuable, please remember to like and subscribe to my channel so you can continue to get more videos like this one. And I'll see you guys on the next one.